Good morning from Hawaii. I'm Don Durrell, and I'm going to share a story that addresses the disparity men face with false accusations. For the past 21 years, I've been fighting the state of Hawaii with my husband, Ronis Durrell, in a case where Ronis's innocence was lost at the hands of a false accusation that resulted in a wrongful conviction. To give you a little bit of history so you can understand the impact that a wrongful conviction has had on Ronis and our family and our drive to keep fighting, let me share a bit about him and what transpired, changing life as we knew it. Ronis, a Black man, grew up in Louisiana and was raised by his mother, Hattie Mae Hill, a civil rights activist who marched and fought for the civil rights movement, even putting her life on the line. At the young age of 17 years old, Hattie Mae was attacked and hit in the head by a large metal object that was thrown from a slingshot. While she was being rushed to safety, a white mob continued trying to attack her in their attempt to kill her. Although this happened to her, it did not sway her to stop her fight. Instead, she continued fighting for what was right, setting the example for her children. Let's fast forward to 1993. Ronis was fresh out of high school. He joined the United States Navy, where he spent the next 10 years of his life, a career that he enjoyed, he was dedicated to, and one that he took an oath to serve and protect. He was on a fast track as he made rank at each opportunity. On his evaluations, his superior said he didn't meet the standards. Instead, he set them. In 2003, this was abruptly destroyed by a false accusation by the daughter of an ex-girlfriend who led her mother to believe Ronis was the person she was having sex with when she thought she was pregnant and didn't want to disclose to her mother who the real perpetrators were. Her mother named several individuals, her stepfather being named first, to which she stated no. When Ronis's name was mentioned after several other names, the accuser stopped responding, leading her mom to believe it was him. Her mom went to the police, and from there, the false accusation continued as the girl was determined to hide whom she was really sexually involved with. Not long after the accusation was made, the mother and stepfather caught the girl having sex with her stepfather's best friend. This was disclosed to the prosecution prior to the indictment. However, the prosecutor took this story and misled the grand jury to believe that it was Ronis. Let's fast forward again. The stepfather with the accuser confesses his love for his stepdaughter to the wife prior to the start of Ronis's trial. This information was shared with the prosecution who told the girl's mother not to mention it during the trial and to stick to only what they knew at the time of the accusation, not what they learned later. Again, misleading the jury to believe the girl was involved with Ronis when indeed she was not. Fast forward to 2009. The girl and Ronis both submitted to polygraph exams with the world-renowned specialist Jack Tremarco. Ronis's exam showed complete truth with a plus 10. The girl, complete deception with a negative 8. During her interview with Tremarco, she confessed that the person she was involved with was her stepfather. Five weeks after Ronis's conviction, the accuser at the age of 16 married her stepfather's best friend, who was 29 years old. Both the stepfather and the best friend admitted in sworn declarations and testified under oath to sexually assaulting the girl during the time frame that Ronis was accused and convicted for. The state of Hawaii was fully aware that Ronis was innocent, however, chose to continue fighting to hold the conviction, even to the extent of letting two admitted sexual predators walk free, one a local white man, the other a local Hawaiian man. It took 16 years to get Ronis exonerated and his name cleared. In January of 2020, he was finally exonerated, his record expunged, his name and face removed from the sex offender registry. However, it doesn't end there. Ronis' military career was ruined. He was ripped away from his family, and although he's free and exonerated and has returned to the family, justice is still missing. The state of Hawaii refuses to accept responsibility for the wrongful conviction. His attorney's actions after his exoneration resulted in legal malpractice, damaging his case against the state of Hawaii the accuser, and the actual perpetrators. And now we're fighting to find an attorney who is willing to take on the legal malpractice case because all attorneys here in Hawaii either work together or for each other. So there's a conflict of interest or they feel threatened to attempt a case against another lawyer. 21 years later, and we're still dealing with the injustices that are caused by a false accusation. The state of Hawaii has a compensation law in place. However, they make it impossible for any exoneree to receive it because they require a judge state that the individual is factually innocent. A person being exonerated and the conviction being thrown out, it's not enough. If there is no conviction, if the person is exonerated, are they not innocent? This must change. They've had to fight for their freedom. They shouldn't have to fight for compensation too.
False accusations bring such heavy burdens on the individuals, their families, and the community. The lack of integrity and desire to do the right thing in the justice system screams for a need for system reform. The lack of accountability upon prosecutors and judges and those in authority, as well as those who bring the false accusations is a problem that must be addressed. The only way to prevent any future instances of such devastation is to draw awareness and demand change. We have organizations like the Advocates for the Falsely Accused, where we provide support to those enduring such devastating challenges and exonerated nation who help exonerates to help get the support they need when returned to society. But we need numbers. We need more in this fight for justice and to end false accusations and wrongful convictions. Only then will we see changes in the system. Thank you.